or is it afternoon? No, still morning. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I'm going to turn this mic on, sorry. Giving honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Respect to pastor and co-pastor, to our ministers in the house, to our deacons, to all of you, our father's children. God is a great God and greatly to be praised. I've been paying attention for the last, I don't know how many weeks now, um, to the messages and Pastor's message last week was right on time talking about a willingness to change. A willingness to change means that you have to be obedient. You got to listen to what God is saying to you. And um, even today I was listening um, to, you know, the different things that um, were connected to our worship experience this morning. And everything is falling in place. And how many of us know that um, Jeremiah 29 and 11 does not lie? None of the word lies, but God has a plan for each of us, an expected end. But in between that plan, some stuff jumps off. In between the plan, in between the time that we dream what we dream or we envision what we envision, And to the culmination, there's some stuff. And the stuff is not always pretty. It's not always comfortable. It's not always easy. But that doesn't mean that it hasn't been ordained by God. And so in the midst of the stuff, we still have to hold on. So the thought that the Lord gave me, and one of the other things before I give you the theme, one of the other things that I thought about was that the world says that seeing is believing. And then they say, well, I'll be, or they say, I'll believe it when I see it. But that's not how it works for Christians. We have to believe it before we can actually see it. But so many of us are believing the hype of the world that we get our minds twisted up because everybody else is saying, did you see that? Did you see that? Did you see that? No. We need to start saying, did you believe that? Did you believe that? Did you believe that? All right. Today I want to preach from the thought, graduate your vision. Graduate your vision. The vision that we have as adolescents or young teens should be different than the vision or the the vision that we have for ourselves as adults and as we grow in stature and in wisdom. The way that we hear from God and walk in obedience to his commands should be increasing as we continuously develop in our relationship with him. There are three points that I want to um, leave with you. The first is, what is that on you? The second one is, follow the instructions. And the third is, the results of your graduation. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, we praise you, we magnify you, for this is the day that you have made, and we shall rejoice. We thank you, God, for this word, and we thank you, God, that it's going to accomplish everything that you have sent forth for it to do. We pray, God, that the distractions will cease, God, that you will um, preach through me with power and conviction, that your word, God, will do exactly what you have promised. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Look at verse 1 of Jeremiah 37. I'm sorry, Ezekiel 37. It says, the hand of the Lord was upon me. This isn't just 
any hand. It's not my mama's hand. It's not my husband's hand. It's not even pastor or co-pastor's hand. It is the hand of the Lord. Yahweh, the all-sufficient one, the God who is, the God who, whatever we have need of, he is that. So this is the hand that is upon us. And then it goes on to say, and it carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. And Brother Dennis used an analogy on Wednesday night at Bible study. It's like um, a child reaching up to his parent for the parent to carry him or her. And that's how the Lord is with us. The Lord is carrying us. And then it goes with to say not only is he carrying us, but he's selling us. So wherever we find ourselves, God has us there. Well, and not only does he has, ha, he placed us there, he set us there for a reason. Because God, I used to have a teacher that um, would say, baby, I'm about to show you some things you ain't never seen before. And so sometimes God has us in these places Sometimes they're unusual places, places where we might not necessarily feel comfortable because he's trying to show us some things that we ain't never seen before. What is that on you? It's God's hand setting you in the valley. Of dry bones. And what I liked about the scripture, it says that there were many dry bones. So this lets us know that we are not in this by ourselves. Each one of us has a dry bone. You might be dry about one thing, and I might be dry about something else. But we all got some dry bones. And then it says that, he, when he, he set me down in the midst of the bones that he had me looking around. So why would God have us looking around at the dry bones? Again, so we could say, so that we could see we're not in this by ourselves. It's the whole body that is dry in one place or another. But we have to understand that because we're in the valley, it's a good place. Because God is with us. Doesn't the scripture say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of de death, he is with us. So if we are in the Lord and the spirit of the Lord is upon us, that means that the Lord is ordering our steps. Isn't that right? But how are we... We tend to forget that when it's uncomfortable, when it doesn't feel good. We feel like God has deserted us. But back to verse 1, the hand of the Lord was upon me. And if the hand of the Lord is upon me, that means that it doesn't stop being upon me when I get to my dry place. It doesn't stop be, being upon me when I get scared, when I get weak, when I fall short. The hand of, of the Lord is upon me at all times in every situation. Yes. My God. My God. And when we carry in the spirit of the Lord, that's the critical part. We have to stay in the spirit. Amen. We have to see what God sees. Well, and the scripture goes on when he talks to, um, talks to Ezekiel. He says, son of man, or daughter of man, whatever you, wherever you want to find yourself, prophesy to these bones. And all prophecy is, is the revealed truth of God. He wants us to speak over ourselves what he is speaking about us. He wants us to encourage ourselves in the word of God. But how many of us don't want to go to the word of God because if the truth be told, we're angry at God. How many of us are angry at God? Because of where 
where we are. Don't nobody, that's real. Don't nobody want to admit that they're angry with the God of all creation. How many of us wake up in the morning and say, how did I get here? God, how did this happen to me? It's real. But nobody, we think that we can't say that to God. We think that we can't be angry with God. We think that we can't come clean with God. But when we come clean with God, that's when he begins to work. And when we speak the word of God, when we prophesy, God, see, God already knows the outcome. He wants to us to admit where we are, he wants us to get, um, uh, um, he wants us to give him our opinion about where we are. Do we see it? People say half that the glass is half empty, or is it half full? It's about perspective. But a lot of times we're so angry we don't want to look. This is bad. This is bad. I can't look. But God is saying, I want you to look at where you are. And I want you to speak my truth over yourself. Not what it looks like. Not what people say it should be. But I want you to speak the truth that's in my word. And my word says that you shall live and not die. It was a Star Trek said, what is it, live long and prosper? You will live long and prosper. What you are going through, what we are going through, is not going to kill us. And the truth of the matter is, a lot of times, what we're going through is not really for us. It's about building the kingdom. How do you build the kingdom? You build the kingdom by sharing your testimony. We talked about it in Sunday school this morning, that if you don't have a test, how can you have the testimony? But see, we want to skip that part. We don't want to go through the school of hard knocks. How can you have hope if you've never been in a dry place? You have to be down and out in order to acquire hope. You have to hit hit hard knocks in order to know that you can get up and live. And so, again, in verse 3, he says, and he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. The Lord is trying to get us again to take, get us, get our take on our situation. But we've lost hope. Our spiritual vision is dim. We forget that the hand of the Lord is upon us and that the spirit of the Lord has set us in this place. And if I know anything about God, I know that he is intentional. So he will intentionally let us be dry. He will intentionally let our bank accounts zero out. He will intentionally let our homes go into foreclosure. So that he can get us to see what he sees. But when he asks us, what do we see? We give him a, we respond like we're a 10 year old. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I don't know. I don't know. And I thought about this and I remember when I was young and if I didn't give my mother the response that she expected. I had to repeat the lesson. And some of us 
are going around the same issue over and over and over again because nobody flunks in God's school. He wants us to graduate our vision. And if we don't graduate our vision, you get to repeat the lesson. So he says, okay, I'm going to say this one more and again. I said to you, I want you to prophesy. What do you see? How do you see yourself? Well, Do you see yourself as a spiritual midget? Or do you see yourself as more than a conqueror? What do you see? Prophesy upon these bones and say unto these bones, hear the word of the Lord. And understand this. Prophecy, again, is speaking what God says about you. God is trying to get us to follow his instructions. And this is the critical step in the graduation process. Every time Ezekiel prophesied as he was commanded, the Lord moved on his behalf. Look at um, verses 5 and 6. He says, Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. We don't have to do anything. Other than do what God is calling us to do. But a lot of times we think that the result is based on our sufficiency. It's not. It's based on the grace of God and our obedience. Because if the truth be told, once again, we can do nothing without him. All we have to do is do what God tells us to do and the rest belongs to God. But we're so scared we're, and we're, we think so much of ourselves that we have to do this, we have to do this. We don't have to do a darn thing other than do what God has commanded us to do. And when we do that, when we get out of our flesh, when we get out of our pride thinking that we got it going on, that we got the power of heaven and earth in our hands, that's when God can move. Without him, we can do nothing. But we have to participate in our graduation. So how do we participate in our graduation? We follow the lead of the Holy Spirit. How many of us sitting right here and now have received a word or a vision from the Lord about what he has called us to do But we have either regressed or digressed because of the noise. What noise? Look at verse 7. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. So as we are on our way to do ministry, there's going to be noise. And behold, a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. So I'm on my way to do ministry, and here comes the noise, distraction. And not only did I hear the noise, I saw the shaking. But the noise and the shaking are part of God's plan in order order for it to come together. Didn't the scripture just say that? It says before it was the noise, then the shaking. And what I like about the scripture, when I kept reading this over and over and over and over again, it says there was a noise, comma. Comma. It wasn't a period. So, and I preached this a couple round a couple weeks ago. The comma is just a pause. It's a hiccup. It's not a period. It doesn't mean for us to stop. You gotta keep moving when you hear the noise. 
the spirit of the Lord is upon us. And we have to be about the kingdom. And if we bow every time there's a distraction, where will the kingdom be? People are supposed to experience heaven on earth. Am I right about it? Through us. But if we bail every time there's a distraction, every time there's a shaking, how will people come to know the love of Christ? Well, we have to stay the course. We have to stay the course. How many of us are willing to do that. And everybody has different levels of noise. My God. Your noise might be so much greater than mine. Somebody else's noise might be just a little. You know how you, um, my husband's been experienced ringing in his ears. And sometimes he says, the pitch is real high. Sometimes it's real low. And so it's been distracting him. And so he says he can't hear what I'm saying. <laughs> Just saying. Because it's a distraction. But God's voice, God's voice can be heard over any distraction. It can be heard over the thunder. It might be lightning, thunder. It might be storming and right in, in front of you. But God's voice is greater than all of it. All of it. We get distracted by our jobs. I'm a witness. Our families. Trouble over here. Trouble over there. Trouble everywhere. But when we align ourselves and reckon in our spirit that obedience, we're going to be obedient no matter what comes our way. Oh That's when we'll experience victory. That's when we graduate our vision. I looked in my yearbook. I don't, God has jokes. So I looked in my yearbook from 19... And... My ambition back then was to be an administrative assistant. Huh? <laughs> I was 17 years old. Today, my vision better be greater. See, that 17-year-old vision was way back then. So by now... My vision should have graduated. Well, but sometimes we are so spiritually immature that our vision doesn't graduate. God. And sometimes God will let us get exactly what we want because we're not graduating our vision. And as I said, we should, our, our level of expectation in God should be getting greater. As we grow in him. God doesn't want us to be spiritual um, midgets. And I was reading something that says um, there's something called age-related macular degeneration. So that means that the older we get, our vision gets, can get blurry. That's one of the symptoms. And our vision can get dim. But in the spirit realm, this can happen too. Because some of us, when 
we get to a certain age, we think all hope is gone because we're older. But God doesn't see us like that. That goes back to how do we see ourselves. Do we see the glass half empty or the glass half full? God said that we are great. We are giants. We are precious in his sight. And Brother Dennis just played the song. He is calling our name. He is calling our name because there's purpose to our lives. There's purpose for our lives. And the purpose is to bring his name, honor, and glory. It doesn't matter how old you are. The purpose is honor and glory unto God. But we allow the age-related macular degeneration to take root, and we give up. And that's not what God wants for us. God wants us to graduate our vision. And what we do, when we start looking and thinking the way God wants us to think and prophesy over ourselves, we'll see results. So everybody knows Joshua. Josh loves to talk. And Josh has a big brain. Like he's always, like it's a lot of knowledge in that brain of his. So he's always telling us, my mom, papa, this is my plan. This is my plan. I said, all right, Josh, here we go. So his plan is to go to Oregon State University. After he graduates from Oregon State University, he's going to be drafted into the NFL. And not only is he going to be drafted in the NFL, he's going to be a millionaire. He's going to make all of this money, and he's going to buy me and Pop Pop a house next to his house. He's going to hook you up too, Ash, but he's, going, he's just telling me what he's going to do for my mama, papa. He's going to buy us a house next to his house, and then after he finishes with the NFL, he's going to buy houses for homeless people, and he's going to take care of them and feed them. Amen. Amen. Come on, he's graduating his vision. At his young age, he has a vision. And so now he's actually trying to work his vision at an early age. So we're trying to kind of get him to balance. Baby, you got to finish school first. Let's finish school. But he has a plan because God has put something in him at a young age. And so he believes that he can fly. He believes that he can touch the sky. How many of us want to graduate our vision? A lot of us have been living down here, and God has said, I want you to come up a little higher, because your vision, just like Josh had all of this stuff connected to his vision, his vision wasn't just about him. His vision was making the kingdom great. His vision was about blessing somebody else. How many of us want to make our vision great so that we can bless somebody else? How many of us? What a mess of vision day so somebody can experience heaven on earth. This is not about us. This is about building the kingdom of God. And I don't know why, but for some reason God keeps dealing with me about this. Building kingdom on earth. Graduate our vision. If I'm connected to you and you're connected to me, we're going to be blessed together. This is not just about me. So when we fall short of our visions, we're not falling short for ourselves, but we are actually stunting the kingdom of God. This is kingdom business. So when we don't see ourselves the way God sees us, we're shortchanging the kingdom. Everybody, everybody under the sound of my voice has a purpose.
purpose, has a gift, and has a talent to be used for God's glory. And God is saying, enough of that 10-year-old vision, enough of that 17-year-old vision. I want you to come up a little higher for my glory, for my honor, and for my praise. Take a minute and think about how you would feel if somebody connected to you didn't fulfill their vision. What if pastor and co-pastor decided Starting the church is too hard for us. No, no. We're not going to do it. What if Brother Dennis decided, I don't have time to be doing this music? Every week? Every service? What if Sister Norma decided, I'm not doing those programs. Let them figure it out. Each one of us has a gift, and it's for God's glory. And we have been cowing down for too long because of the noise, because we feel like, I can't do it, I'm not capable. No, we're not in our flesh. But when the hand of the Lord is upon us, and when the Spirit of the Lord is fueling us for the journey, The word of God tells me that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We don't have to carry ourselves. That's why Jesus died to carry each and every dry place, every hurt, every insecurity, every inferiority complex, whatever it is, wherever we are dry, the Lord has us covered. And he's carrying us through the valley of the shadow of death. So it is my prayer that we will graduate our vision so somebody on earth might come to know Jesus in a better way. And if Pastor and Co-Pastor won't mind, I'm going to ask you to stand. And if you know God has given you a vision, I'm going to pray that this year, no holes barred, that we will launch out into the deep, that we will stop thinking of ourselves as not capable, not able. I want you to come down to the altar. If God has given you a vision or a dream, and Dami Joe and Doug are perfect examples, when God gives you a vision, take it, baby, and run, baby, run. 